holding for monitor and control the nuclear reactors. The fuel is naturally occurring uranium. That process into small pellets. Then the pellet are sealed into metal tubes, which are welded to form a fuel bundle. The fuel bundles are then inserted in a large tank called calandria, which is the heart of the nuclear reactor. Typically more than 200 of these rods are bundled together to form a fuel assembly. A reactor core is typically made up of a couple of hundred assemblies. In order to allow nuclear fission to proceed in a controlled manner, a control rod exists. The control rod can be moved up and down to control the fission rate of uranium. The nuclear power plant produces electricity using the heat that comes from splitting uranium atoms in a process called nuclear fission. Nuclear fission is a nuclear radioactive decay process in which the hitting neutrons on the uranium atoms, then the uranium atoms split into two and it releases three neutrons. Each process releases two uranium atoms and three neutrons a chain reaction of atom splitting and ensure that there is a constant source of heat, meaning that it generates lots of heat. This heat is used to convert electricity. Let's explore how they produce electricity from heat. The Calandria vessel is a... Well, I want to... I don't, I don't, I don't know what to say about that, really, you know. No, just play it. Play it here. Hold, so, on. hold on. They're, they're talking about nuclear fission. So, should we you, play it with audio? As far as it is, hold on, without audio. Wait, well, all right. Uh, they're talking about nuclear fission here. Yeah. And the biggest question. Here, hold on, pause. 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 Look, most important. Did yeah. you see that? No, I didn't. Well, just play it again. Oh, sorry, right, yeah, think about it. The fuel rods here. Whoa, pause. There's a neutron. Yeah. Now, the fuel rods. Where does that neutron come yeah. from? The fuel rods are made of uranium. Uranium pellets all, all uh, closely packed together inside a yeah, the zirconium um, tubes, rod welded, welded tubes with the end sealed. Yeah. Where did the neutron come from uh, that uh, bombards the uranium in, pellet in the, to get the to get it going to get it going? Yeah. Yeah. Where does it come from? Mm, that's mm. good. That's a good uh, good question. Well, it couldn't have come from. Uh, well, I don't know. No, because it's supposed to. Sp the neutron hits the uranium, and then you get neutrons supposed to come uh, off from come the off uranium, from yeah. which then bombard other uranium yeah. Yeah. Uh, atoms or molecules yeah. or whatever. But where did the first neutron come from? Yeah, <sighs> mm. that's a good question, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, you can be very intelligent and very good at what you do, and you can still be stupid. Well, we're back again, annoying people with our views and opinions because oh, because loads of people really dislike hearing other people's views and opinions. Yeah, that is so true. That is so true. Especially if you was a, a Brexiter living in France, and uh, oh, and your name's Andrew Neil, and your name's Andrew Neil, oh, or, yeah. or whatever. I bet quite a few Brexiters who live abroad voted for Brexit. Oh yeah, I know. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Mm, it's a bit of a bit of an irony that isn't doesn't it? Doesn't make sense really. You'd think yeah. the only people who'd vote for Brexit are the people who live here. Yeah, I know. Yeah, you know? yeah. But uh, anyway, but uh, as as we've mentioned many times before, we're we're in uh, we're living in a society where which is filled with ment mentally ill people. Mm. People think the wildest of things to be true when they can't be proved to be true. true. Yeah, unfortunately. And, and there's this one here. Yeah, the carbon dioxide a scam, scam yeah. absolutely, of course. Because There's people out there, obviously, who really, truly think, they really, truly think that carbon dioxide naturally occurs in the atmosphere. Wow. They actually think that to be true. True. Mm. So we're going to have a little look at Go that on. and uncover the bullshit, mm. really, that yep. surrounds the myth. Absolutely. And, uh, well, so, yeah, so... Uh, how are you, Peter? Are you well? well? Are you well or are you well? I'm well, and we both hope you are all well too, because it's important that everyone's enjoying the summer. 
it's important warm weather. absolutely it's important for everyone to be positive to be positive absolutely. and in good spirits of course because if you're not in good spirits there's no point even being alive Life. absolutely yes really, of course mm. so what have we got on for everyone's displeasure for this early evening yeah, well for this early evening for everyone but, um, for everyone's displeasure we're going to have a look at the frank caro process which is um prerequisite <sighs> to making prerequisite to the bosch the haber process, process. Mm. very interesting that one Absolutely. We're going to have a look. We're going to have a look. At, we've got some. Uh, we've bought some iodine, and we've got a little iodine demo, which ties in with the CO two and photosynthesis. Absolutely, of course. Yeah, we've great got one. some. Yeah, we've got a great one to show people. Uh, we're going to. We got some photos of uh, some graffiti that just happened to coincide with the London protest over oh, the right, weekend. Right. Okay, yeah, the London March. The London March. You can't really call it a pro. Oh, well, the protest. Protest March. March whatever. And we're going to have a look at Aria Jane comment. Not Jane, as in J A N E. Aria, Aria, Jane, comment because he talks about yeah. Because this guy, dioxide. yeah, this guy, believe it or not, believe it or not, this guy actually thinks there's carbon dioxide in the atmosphere mm. occurring naturally. You know, and he thinks he only thinks. Mm. So we're going to run through his comment so that everyone can see. How mad he is. Mad he is, basically, mm. of course. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, come on. But, uh, so that's what we've got on for everyone. But before we get going, we've got to uh, remind everyone... That zoom to, in. To zoom in with Pete and Pete. Absolutely. If anyone out there who's watching, listening, uh, think our views are wrong, incorrect, um, I don't know, whatever, then feel free to join us on a Zoom meeting and bring along your proof to show or demonstrate that we are wrong. Mm, and if we if we uh, find that you do have some proof, legitimate proof that we are wrong, we will take down any related video on mm. our channel. Yeah, and Zoom can c cater for up to a hundred guests. Yeah, so, so as far as we can take you all on at the same time, yeah. I'm, I'm quite happy oh. to take everyone on at yeah. the same time. But there's only one condition, and we can boot them out of the uh, we can boot them out of the meeting one by one. Yeah, but there's only one condition: people can only talk one at a time. Absolutely, yeah. People can only talk one at a time. So that's going to be very difficult for all of them to uh, um, oh, what's that, time themselves so they're only yeah. speaking one is, at a time. Strange that, is, isn't it strange that you can talk to, say, 100 Globies, or, sorry, 99 Globies, and you, you could end up start a conversation off, yeah. and you could end up just walking away, and they'll all be arguing amongst themselves about their own science. About their own science, absolutely, of course. Yeah, I mean, but everyone should know that... Uh, our, yeah, our views on, on the mainstream science, mm. and that is, it's just in the main when it regards when it refers to the natural world, the natural environment, it's one big fabrication. Absolutely, and come that's on. it. So, um, if, can we, should we go this yeah. way? Come on. What's what's this way? There here? We go. Now, now, over the weekend, it was the London protest, London March, Freedom March. It was Freedom March, absolutely. Because, but the, I was thinking about it the other day, and I'm thinking, but I do enjoy the COVID lockdown. It's great. It's great. It's good. All of this, all of these mentally ill people, you know, mm. have been hiding in their houses. Locked it's been up. wonderful. Absolutely. And today, you know, I tried to cross the road today, and there's car after car mm. after car after car after car, and I'm thinking, well, if it, when it was locked down, I could just stroll across the yeah, road. No. Yeah. It was so easy for me now. Yeah. Or it was so easy for me then, but now, I've got to wait, and I've got to. You know, no, I actually went somewhere today and so someone went along. I was talking to someone who actually went along to the, uh, the March. Freedom March. Oh, the Freedom March. I forgot to ask her whether she met a f flat earther. Oh, sure, yeah, of course. I forgot to mention, I forgot to ask. Yeah, sure. But, uh, yeah, so someone's been busy around our, our local way, spraying the place up with Wake Up. Yep. Yeah. And uh, I'm sure a lot of people are, uh, um, what's the word? Can't work it out. No, they can't yeah. work out yeah, what what the, what the message is. Well, wake up. Well, yeah. When you walk walking down the street and you see this, yeah, you can't think. Wake up. Wake I mean, up. what's the point of that? I'm, I'm awake. awake. I'm awake. As, you know. Yeah, of course. But it's, it's it's kind of quite deep, isn't it? Well, it's not. I wouldn't say it's it's on the surface, really, because yeah. But you got to you got to have that that understanding to know that it's just on the surface. Sure. If you were a young person, for example... Yeah, if you were a young you'd person thinking, wake stall, up. you'd think, well, what's, this, what's that all about? You know. 
But I the thing like... is, is that a lot of young people <sighs> do actually um, are indoctrinated with a lot of rubbish. Yeah, they've got lo lots and lots of rubbish through through education, of course, mm. which just fills up people's heads, heads with, uh, rubbish. with rubbish. Yeah, absolutely. And they and they really lose touch with their true uh, self, with their awokenness. Yeah, well, their true self. Well, their true yeah. self, absolutely, yeah. of course, which is a pity. But uh, I mean, you found another one as well. Yeah. There's three. I've been busy. So they've been absolutely busy. But uh, yeah. whether, how long they stay on there for, we don't know. Yeah. I'm sure that I reckon the council won't like it and they'll go around and yeah. they'll get the, some, of their, off. some of their uh, busy bodies who aren't doing anything, you know, to yeah. well, I was, uh, clean, I went clean to, the walls. I went, I went under a subway yeah. and I saw some guys painting the walls because obviously they've got grief graffiti and I'm like saying to him as I walked past and like I said to him um, you know is it really like is it really worth doing it because yeah how long will it take before how long the, will it before be the graffiti returns until the graffiti returns I know it's, it it's ridiculous I know yeah it's yeah I know the councils certainly have uh, no it's all part of this pretense of making the place look nice but oh, you the think, pretense but what's wrong oh, with the, what's wrong with graffiti on the walls, walls what's wrong with that what's yeah. wrong with it get some graffiti artists and get them all to put paint, graffiti paint, paint right stuff across absolutely graffiti is part of uh, it's it's a common feature of of a city, suburban of a, of, of a city, area, city, city area, area yeah. yeah. Huh? Graffiti. What's what's the problem? The council should have their own graffiti officers. So, oh right, yeah. You know, promoting graffiti, of graffiti in the area. Absolutely, of course. Oh, but uh, you know, but I mean, it's a wonderful little message, and uh, it's certainly something that I can relate to. You know, I'm sure a lot of other people can as well. Can't they? Yeah. So the message is clear. Wake, wake up. up. Absolutely, wake up. Get out of your dream world. The trouble well, is slumber. Yeah, but the trouble is a lot of people... As they don't a, want to wake you know, up. As like, um, oh, Russian vids, people prefer the dream than the reality. Yeah, they put, they, yeah. when you wake up, mm. you've got to face the reality. That's the problem. Yeah. But a lot of people don't want to face that reality, so they uh, remain closed, minded, asleep. Yeah, but the trouble is, is that as they get older, it's a message for everyone out there. Absolutely. As you get older, uh, you've got all you've the got no choice. All the BS that's in your brain, that's in your mind, all, all that's clouding your perceptions, all washes away. Absolutely, of course. All because you begin away. to realise that all you are is just an animal. It's just absolutely and a human like being. Any other animal, people, you, 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 we're going to die. We're going. We're all going to die. Absolutely, of course. So the reality is, is that, uh, and that reality remains with us for all of our lives. Yeah. And there's, you know, there's lots of people, there's lots of people who fill so, up their heads, uh, fill up their dream, fill up their heads with dreams of, of having money and desires, desires and Absolute wants desires. and needs. Yeah, and they're but wrong, what, really. What, by doing that, they're taking, they're filling up their heads with all this rubbish so that they're disconnected from the real, real world. Real world. Yeah. So in some ways, you yeah. could, some ways you could actually argue that you're actually... Sure. By filling up your head with rubbish, mm. you're making it harder for you to let go. For you to let go, absolutely, of course. It's unsurprising why people get heart attacks. Heart attacks, heart uh, nervous breakdowns, Alzheimer's, uh, oh, dementia. No, dementia, all of this kind of, uh, these these problems that mind you, many mind you, people yeah, face. Mind you, it's quite interesting because um, I was talking to someone today. This is this is great, great example of... Um, what oh. goes around comes around. Oh, okay, go on then. Because I was talking to someone about, um, you know, if somebody does something bad to you, then you could actually take quite a philosophical view yeah, on it. And, well. you can, and you oh. can think to yourself, okay, I won't instigate anything, I won't do anything. Because what goes around comes around. No, no. what it, what it means, what you should be saying is that the, if you took a philosophical stance, you can kind of like ease your own discomfort oh, right, or the yeah, way yeah. Pe other people make you feel yeah. so what goes around come, comes around so if someone does you harm for example you can think well life life yeah repays. even though i feel really bad yes. about this situation yeah. but life repays for example because absolutely a, of course a, yeah. a woman very quickly a woman was telling me that a, a friend of hers um went to a hospital to have uh, an operation on her foot oh okay yeah sure and now it's worse 
Well, you wouldn't have thought before the, she had the operation. Yeah, that doesn't make sense, does it? You'd think you'd go into hospital and it would be better rather than worse. Yeah. And then when you understand the, the, the laws of karma kind sure. of thing, you kind of think, well, I wonder what she's done in her, in her pa- life, previously, in yeah, her previous course. life, to endure that. Because she might be really gutted that she's gone to hospital and the doctors yeah. have said to her, yeah, we can do that, we can sort that, yeah, out, we'll for sort that out for you. That won't be a problem. And then when she comes out of hospital, the foot's worse. Yeah. You know, and you think, well, you know, and she's cursing that hospital. She might yeah. even take the doctors to call. Cool. Yeah, no, yeah. But then she'll realise she can't get anywhere. Absolutely, Because yeah. the legal system's all... No, not so much the legal system. No, the people in it. The, oh, well, yeah. But a lot of people don't want to admit like, when they're wrong. Absolutely, and yeah, that's the trouble. Oh, yeah. with, that's the trouble with this society, and that's a lot of people don't simply don't want to admit when they're wrong. Wrong, yeah, you know? no, no. for anyway. some weird, weird reason. Come on, let's go. There you go. Come on, let's go. So, uh, what else do we do? Let's do. Um, let's do the Frank Caro process. No, let's do the um, iodine demo. Iodine. Okay. Now, oh, photosynthesis. Photosynthesis. Yeah. Now, we did. Um, oh, sorry. Do we just need to touch on this one? All right. Yeah, we could do. Yeah, sure. Because uh, was it Rosman who? Ros- I think it was Rosman. Yeah, he gave yeah. us a link to this one. The the main thing is with this video, and that is what creates the neutron to begin with. Absolutely, is electricity. Yeah, this is what we think is it's electricity. But the the thing is, like all videos on nuclear power and how nuclear power is produced. No, they won't tell you exactly how it works. Mm. They'll just come up with this nuclear this fission. Nuclear fission. The uranium is uh, hit, bombarded by neutrons, which split, starts a chain reaction, and produces heat. And then that heats the moderator. The moderator heats the water. The water turns to steam. But they're not telling you actually, you know, on a practical level, how it works. Now we think, as uh, Peter's quite rightly said, and that is what st- what gets this first neutron going. You know, we see it here. They're talking about nuclear fission. fission. In nuclear fission, a lot of people think, well, what the fuck's nuclear fission? Mm. Do you know what I mean? But in our understanding, it's just an excuse to uh, to not let the cat out of the bag, as it were. Mm. You, know, you know, so you've got nuclear fission. And then you've got, they've got the little uranium molecule or atom. And then in comes this neutron, neutron. from somewhere. Well, from, where does it come from? From a neutron generator. generator. And a neutron generator is powered by... Electricity. electricity you've got it of course because oh, a neutron oh it's a neutron um how it's how it's a absolutely of course so you know i mean they essentially i reckon that our view is absolutely right Spot on. and that is you need to have um electricity you need to have electricity to start up your reactor well you need your electricity to create your neutrons in your neutron howitzer and it's those neutrons from your neutron howitzer which are accelerated at fantastically fast speeds that bombard the uranium uranium pellets and the uranium pellets uh, act as resistors resistance to the flow of neutrons which then generates heat. heat. You know, which then heats the moderator. Water. There we go. Come on, water, we're done water there. Turns to steam. Yeah, come on, clear off. But I think the, the thing is that's worth um, um, well, one. No, the no, thing no, that's no. worth mentioning on this one, and that is when they say it's a chain reaction. I personally don't think so. I think that if you if you switched off the electricity supply or the neutron supply, mm. the the reactor would die down yeah. eventually. Just like switching your kettle on. And switching it off. Absolutely, of course, yeah. That's Go what on. I think. But, uh, you know, it's uh, it's quite straightforward to understand, you know. Mm. Come on. If you get rid of the rubbish, mm. if you Go get on. rid of the bullshit. Iodine. But, now, Iodine. Now, we watched... Um, we well, watched, we showcased uh, this video in our last video. Yeah, we showcased this video. CO2 is necessary for photosynthesis. Mm. And we, th- we, could, we, we could clearly tell this is just a scam. The whole... Um, Contrivance. Contrivance. Because what they're actually saying in this demonstration is that they're saying in the left-hand jar, bell jar, there's actually... Oh, sorry, go on. In the left-hand bell jar, they're actually saying that there's CO2... In the air. In uh-huh. the air. Yeah. In the right-hand jar, they're saying that there's no CO2 in the bell jar. Yeah, because it's been the CO2's been absorbed by the sodium hydroxide and the... Um, the soda, soda lime. Soda lime, yeah. Yeah. Now, it's our opinion that when they use uh, iodine to test for the presence of starch in a plant, 
the the it's the presence of it's the co2 that's absorbed by the plant that generates the starch so in the bell jar on no, the that's left that's what they tell you yeah in the bell jar on the left the co2 that's supposed to be in the air is absorbed into the plant and then they do an iodine test and it goes black blue 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 black yeah and they say there you go there's starch presence of starch which means there's co2 which in the confirms air. which confirms the presence of co2, CO2 in the air but they're not they're not proving that there's co2 in the air absolutely yeah of course it's it's like it's like they somebody would say but they're, they're doing it indirectly and you think no 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 what they're doing is they're contriving the demonstration to show to people or to convince people that there's co2 in the air um so the difference being is that you saw one leaf is yellow and the other leaf on the in the other bell jar is 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 a dark blue black color we, we see it there uh, hopefully we, we get a camera shot of the leaf can we see it there, there no, i don't think they're going to show it are, are they oh, yeah there, there we go. go okay and, oh, and they the say green, because of really. that difference because of that difference that that proves the presence of co2 mm. Which is crazy. Yeah. One of the trouble with this demonstration is that in the left hand bell jar they actually put a source of carbon dioxide, which is calcium carbonate. Calcium sure. carbonate. In the funnel in the top. top. So that the water that's placed in the bell inside the bell jar will evaporate because they leave it for a while inside yeah, sure. with light. It'll evaporate and the water will uh, decompose the calcium carbonate, which will then release your CO two. So just to make people think that there's a source of CO2. Absolutely, yeah. of course. Anyway, but uh, now we, because we wanted to kind of like demonstrate that this is a total bullshit um, contrived, contrived demo demonstration. Demo. So what we did, we want to show to people that there's CO2 present in paper. In paper, absolutely, of course. And uh, you, absolutely, there's CO2, apparently, according to our little demo, there's CO2 so present in paper. paper. Mm. So we've we've got some distilled water there. No, dehumidified water, water from our dehumidifier, which is this the same stuff here, which is really all right. Mm, tastes nice. Mm. Mm. So we've just pH the uh, the water just to t show to everyone that it's <coughs> pretty much neutral. Slight, maybe slightly on the acidic side. So what we're going to do, we're going to put some water into this plastic uh, hairspray top. We're going to add some sodium hydroxide, some caustic mm -hmm. soda. There we go, move forward. It's even produced in the UK, so there we go. There we go, let's see you putting that in. There we go, you've put the water in. Give it a shake. Come on, let's see some bits coming out. There, there you go. go. Yeah, not a lot. You don't. We don't need a lot. There we go. So we give it a stir around mm -hmm. with a spatula, wooden spatula. Do a pH test. Do a pH just, test, just, just to show you. There you go, it's alkaline. Just to show you globies. Okay, so we've got water on the left and we've got uh, sodium, sodium hydroxide, hydroxide solution, solution on the right. right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to smear the paper with uh, a few drops of uh, water. Huh? So the paper on the left is going to be covered in water, plain water. Okay. Let's from our dehumidifier. From our dehumidifier. So it's, and the paper on the right is going to have some sodium hydroxide solution on it. Mm. Okay. So let's have a little butchers. Now I have to admit, what we've not demonstrated, we've not demonstrated the presence of CO two at all, have we? No. That you know we we don't need to say well we don't need to tell everyone well there's CO two in the air because we know there isn't. Mm. So we're not going to do that. We're going to spread out the uh, the water on the paper. There we go, and spread out the, yeah, just damp it down. Spread out the sodium hydroxide solution on that bit, put a bit of paper. Damp it down. Damp it down. Now, here we go, we've got some iodine. This is, wait there, you'll have to turn it around. Yeah, that's too, that looks like it's reversed, doesn't it, that lady? Oh, well. Yeah, something like that. Oh, it's in, I don't know. Oh, well, yeah. A different well, language. China. It's in a different language. No, I don't think Thailand. So. Betadine, betadine solution. There you go. Uh, Povid iodine, USP 10%, with equivalent 1% available iodine, a first aid antiseptic. There you go. Yeah. Okay. So you can put it on your corns if you want. If you, mm. or, or your. Um, 
warts. Oh, you got right, warts. Yeah, warts. Yeah. Oh, that's what they put. You put on warts, oh, right, yeah, yeah. I do. Yeah. Anyway, they smother it on so it just can't so breathe. So remember, so remember the plant in the bell jar on the left left hand side. The plant, when the leaf is exposed to iodine, it goes but blue purpley or a very dark when green. When there's starch present, it's blue black. And they say that it's, it's the CO2 that produces the starch. They say it's the, so without the CO2, it will go yellowish. Yellow, yeah. It will go yellowish without the CO2. Yeah. So let's have a little look at the colour of the paper with a few drops of iodine. Okay. Mm. There we go, wait there. That's it. There we go, there's there one go. drop. And let's have a little look. Here comes another drop. Do, do, do. Come on, there we go. Do, 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 oh, do. looky there. Right, there we go. And let's just sit and wait. Now, obviously, there's clearly no CO2 present, as far as we're aware. But if mm. we accept what they were telling us in the photosynthesis video, uh, that uh, the, the presence of starch, which goes blue-black, demonstrates the the, the presence of CO2. CO2. Yeah. So we so could maybe, argue, maybe, yeah, we could argue that the, the paper has absorbed carbon dioxide from the air. We we could argue that. Yeah, we. Well, I suppose we could argue that. We, well, there's a lot of CO2 though, though, isn't it? Yeah, no, yeah. Or the paper's filled with starch. Oh, could well be. There, yeah. there could be a small amount of starch in it. Mm. But at the end of the day, what we're seeing here is that there's there's no proof or evidence of CO2 being present in this demonstration Station at all, at all. No. and yet what we do see is it, the sodium hydroxide tends to neutralise the um, iodine, mm. so it was understandable why. When we look at this video here, and we look at the, the different leaf colours, I don't think they actually put them together do they? Yeah, like the leaf colour here, we can understand why it looks kind of a bleached colour. Yes, yeah, because the sodium hydroxide Dioxide solution, solution has reacted with the iodine. Basically, because it's been absorbed in the sodium hydroxide solution has been absorbed into the plant. Into the plant, yeah, because the plants breathe. Yeah, yeah they transpire. They transpire. They absorb the surrounding air and they release an air, probably a cleaner air, I would have thought. But, uh, and we can see the leaf on the other side there, you know, it looks very dark there. Whereas the leaf there looks yeah, there we go. much lighter. There we go. So there's there's no this is just a pure contrivance at the end of the day. Yeah. Um, CO2 is necessary for photos. No way. No I way. mean, come on, that's just a claim. But there's no proof that claim is true. true. Mm. So especially in the natural environment. Especially in the natural environment. Absolutely, of course. So we've done that, that one then, Peter. Come on, let's go on so, to our our. Oh, right, yeah, of course. Now, we might um, as well go on and do our main thing then, because that follows Yeah, of course, CO2. yeah. So let's go back on to our main thing. Main so topic. That, I suppose that sets the scene for our yeah. So there you go, the carbon dioxide scam, yeah. absolutely, of course. Now, we, we are fully aware that we could say there is carbon dioxide existing in the atmosphere as a result of pollution. Combustion mm. and pollution. Yeah, well, you should get up uh, Earth's atmosphere first. Why? To show people the Earth's atmosphere is made up of XXX. Okay, if you want me to. Because I do believe the carbon dioxide is 0.04%. Point zero, zero 0.04, yeah. There you go. I don't know if you want to uh, Earth's atmosphere. Yeah. yeah. National Geographic, what happened to that? I don't want to look at that. Yeah, there you go. Look, Earth's atmosphere is composed oh, of right. about 78%, nitrogen 21%, of 0.9% argon and 0.1% are the trace amounts of CO2. CO2, trace amounts of CO2, methane, water really? vapour, neon, are some of the other gases that make up the remaining 0.1%. Wow. So we got into a, well, you got into a conversation. I got into a conversation um, after, uh, after, because we left a little comment on this video. Carbon dioxide trapping the earth's heat, you know, with, uh, I've forgotten his name now, Stuart. Was it? Yeah. Is it? I can't think of his name. Anyway, doesn't matter. Anyway, guy with blue shirt. Yeah, he's a Scottish guy. Um, and we wrote, if CO2 traps and absorbs heat, then how can the sun's heat pass through it in the first, first place? place? The earth would be getting colder, not, not warmer. warmer. I think Keeling, who was the guy who uh, took measurements of CO2 allegedly mm. over a 30, 40 year period, should have taken samples from the upper atmosphere. 
Also, CO2 is heavier than air, so it should be on the ground than up in the atmosphere, which is very true. Yeah. I've placed CO2 in a square, square container. It disappeared after all. If CO2 is absorbed in the oceans, then there should be less CO2 in the, in the atmosphere. atmosphere. And if the oceans are acidified, then the brine water should neutralise it to prevent it turning to, into carbonic acid. Mm. If trees and plants absorb CO2 through photosynthesis, they aren't doing their jobs properly, or there's something seriously wrong with photosynthesis. photosynthesis. Yeah, because when you think about it, all it is is just an understanding of the natural world. It's, it it doesn't it, mean to say it's true. It doesn't mean to say it's true at all. So we, we had this, we, we started off this comment uh, thread with uh, Aria Jane, okay, talking about um, CO2. Uh, CO2. And, I, you know, I keep asking him, have you got any proof for that? Yeah. There's 39 comments. You don't want to be going through yeah, all 39. 39. 39 comments, okay. I won't go through them all, but we'll, they, this, is, this is important because this guy seriously thinks CO2 exists naturally in the, the atmosphere. atmosphere. Oh, because one of his proofs for that, and that is the fractional distillation of air. Fractional distillation of air. Absolutely, of course. Well, we'll have a little look because I give him yeah. a... There you go. Yeah, you say fractional. Um, you you say yeah, fractional. It should be if you read more. Yeah, oh, I don't want to read all this. Yeah, carbon dioxide yeah. has several tests. You know, yeah. he's he's talking from a very basic yeah. level because he's talking at at a school level, where well, you'd use lime water. Yeah, for but, example. But the carbon dioxide has several tests. A biological test is the one with the plants. Lime water is a chemical test, and but he also mentions fractional distillation is a physical, physical test. test. So. Absolutely, it's a physical test. Now, this is the good bit. This is where it gets good. Because um, what we're actually him. asking him, and that is, well, we're, what, oh, we're actually, we what we're actually saying to him is that they don't produce CO2 when they fractionally distill air. Let's pick it up from here. Um, none of that, I've, I've said to him, none of that is proof that CO2 occurs naturally in the, in the atmosphere. You only think CO2 is in the atmosphere. It's amazing what people think to be true, but they can't prove it to mm. be true. Yeah, I know. You know. Um, tell me, would a solution of lime water in a large bowl open to the atmosphere turn milky over time because of the CO2 in the air? You know, is CO2 it, is absorbed absorbs into, into the water, lime water, and turns milky. Mm. If so, how long should it take to turn milky? You know, you should know this. And Aria Jane uh, says, it is proof that CO2 occurs in the air. I literally told you we can separate it using fractional distillation. I've proven that it exists. You're the dumb bow who can't understand basic science. Yes, lime water will turn milky. I'm not sure of the time needed, but I think about 5 to 30 hours. Wow. Oh, maybe we should actually do that. Oh, wow, well, yeah. 5 to 30, depending on the conditions. Keep lime water in a closed jar with plants at night, and it'll occur faster. Mm. Mm. Well, we might actually do that. Oh, sounds like a little thing to do for our little uh, Perspex container. All right, OK, yeah. You um, Can you tell me why NaOH... Sodium hydroxide exposed to the air turns into sodium bicarbonate. You can't. You only think you're smart, but you're actually a living, breathing example of Dunning-Kruger. I've given my proof. Now, you need to give me your alternative. That's how debates work. So I've asked, what, what air separation plant produces CO2? Because hmm. he says, he says, here, I literally told you we can separate it using fractional distillation. What air separation plant produces CO2? Got a link. Yeah. I want to know. He yeah. said. And then he says, no one produces carbon dioxide by Dis fractional distillation commercially yeah. because it's inefficient. Oh, okay. So how does he know that there's CO2 in the air? Absolutely. It's obtained as, as a byproduct from Bosch process. However, fractional distillation is true and carbon dioxide can be obtained from air in this method. I've proven my part. Blah, blah, blah. So, so you're stating, this is good, you can under, start understanding his mentality, his mm. rationale, because mm. it's, it's shot to fuck, I'll tell you. So you're stating CO2 is a constituent of air, and go on to tell me that fractional distillation of the air can produce CO2, but then tell me nobody actually produces CO2 by fractional distillation, distillation of air. Yeah. And essentially CO2 is produced by the part combustion of natural gas or coal stroke coke. Mm. You really do need to think about what you're typing because it makes no sense at all. Absolutely, I'll do a video on this because it's worth showing to viewers how messed up you think it yeah, is. Yeah, because in theory, you can clearly tell that he's not. He's 
He thinks something is true because he's been told it, no. not that he's been shown it. Yeah, so what we can do, you know we got our little um, air pump. Yeah. What we can do is put the air pump, pump through, through some, some uh, lime, water. lime water. Yeah, pump air through yeah. lime water and it should turn no CO2 in the air. Time. And leave, the, leave that pump running for about uh, a day. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so he goes on. I mean, I won't go into that. I won't go into that too much. Um, blah blah blah. And then I I reply to this load of rubbish. Uh, if you can't demonstrate CO two is a constituent of air, why do you think CO two is a constituent, constituent of air? Mm. Is it because you've been told CO two is a constituent of air and not been shown CO two is a constituent of air? Yeah. You know, um, I'm trying to understand your rationale. If somebody tells me that they think there's a pink elephant, there's roaming a pink elephant running testing. around. Well, I want to see that pink elephant. elephant. I want yeah. you to demonstrate it's it. That it's there. But these people, anyway, come on. They they can't demonstrate. I anyway, think we're, uh, regarding the plant and photosynthesis, I've quoted him. The plant doesn't photosynthesize, which means there's no carbon dioxide. So getting back to the bell jars, the bell jar where the sodium hydroxide was and the uh, soda lime. Yeah. The one on the right hand side, they tell you that there's no carbon dioxide in the jar, mm. so there's no photosynthesis take place, no pr production of starch. Yeah, come on, hurry up. And I've I've asked, but how do you know the plant uses CO2 to photosynthesize in the natural, natural environment? environment if you can't demonstrate CO2 as a constituent of air? Yeah. Can you understand where we're coming from? from. It's the guy has got mental health problems, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. You know, and then he says, "Oh my God, I've proved." Carbon dioxide is present in the air four times now. But he hasn't. But he hasn't. And I built the photosynthesis argument on that. I thought we had that established when I said that. Even if I hadn't, it doesn't matter because plants use water to make glucose. And that means it needs a carbon compound. Carbon dioxide is the only gaseous carbon compound which occurs naturally in adequate quantities. But he's not showing that. But he's not demonstrating that. that. Yeah. You know... I've proven it. I've proven it exists in air multiple times. Fractional distillation, chemical tests such as calcium hydroxide tests, and acidified anyway, potassium on. dichromate. Blah blah blah. I've put. Well, you're really messed up. Can you can you actually think for yourself, or have you lost the ability? Yeah. Anyway, come on. Quote: Carbon dioxide is the only gaseous compound which occurs naturally in adequate quantity. Sure, I understand what you're stating, but you've not demonstrated that what you're stating is it's the case. case. Again, one demonstration that proves CO2 is a constituent of air, please. Hmm. Yeah, because you want a demonstration. You want a, you all. need to have the demonstration, then you know, you have the knowledge. Hmm. Without the demonstration, you've just got a belief. That's the big difference. Yeah, that's the one. That's the big difference. Pseudoscience. Pseudoscience, again. It's hmm. a, okay. So, it's a very interesting uh, thread. thread, but it does highlight how messed up these people actually are. Thank and it's talk, It's like talking to mentally ill people, you know, people yeah. who've got mental health problems. No, but it's no different to, uh, what's that, uh, film in the 70s? I don't know. Where you put the glasses. Oh, on. they live. They live. It's just the same with that, where these people are, are walking around. They're the aliens. Thinking that there's carbon dioxide naturally occurring in the air. Yeah, sure. Oxygen in the air. But as soon as you put your glasses on, oh, you, you don't see it. You don't see yeah. it, absolutely, because there is none. Yeah. Absolutely, of course. But... Now, anyway, come on. Through the through the discussion, we we did actually do a bit of research, which we and we've actually been able to uncover some information that basically, kind of, does support our view that there's no CO two in the atmosphere at all. I've just got to find the right one. I'm going to click that off. Um, now, how is CO two? How is CO two produced commercially, and why are we short of it? Okay. I think I've got the... How can we be um, short of it? How is CO2 produced commercially? While CO2 can be distilled from the air, so, okay, they're telling you it, that it's a constituent of air, okay? Yeah, that method is expensive and inefficient. Right, okay. But in reality, in our understanding, there's, there's no, none there. There's none there. There's no CO2 Two. in the air. No, there's no CO2 that can be distilled from, from the, the air. air. Absolutely, there course. isn't any in the air. There, absolutely, the only naturally. time the naturally occurring CO2 in the air as a constituent is is bullshit. Yeah, therefore, it's usually captured from other sources where it is a waste material. Sure. This could be anything from brewing beer to burning fossil or fuels. Fuels. Mm. Now, everyone should know that when you burn something, it will give off an air 
that will extinguish the flame. So, absolutely, yeah. And mm. will 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 um, um, exhibit properties that are very in line with the properties of CO2. Yeah, because when you burn something, you're burning something that contains a salt. Salt and, and an, an acid. acid. Absolutely, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, however, the most efficient way of producing carbon dioxide is from ammonia. ammonia. Mm. Now there you go. Now a lot of people didn't don't really aren't aware of that. So we go from there, and we end up going on. Uh, I think we should go on this one. And this is, uh, I think this is bits taken from the chemistry and manufacture of hydrogen. Mm. Believe it or not, and this basically goes back in time, and has a little look. At, um, or was it that one? Wait there, or was it? No, it was this one. Yeah, you want this. We one, want right? this one. Sorry, mm. do apologise. Feed the world. Well. Chemical engine. Feed now this is a very world. good. Let them know it's ammonia. Uh, feed it, uh, the world. But this is a very good article because it does talk about Fritz Haber. Carl Bosch and how they developed the Harbour Bosch process. Yeah, and yes, you've got it. You can understand if you read this why Bosch, the company, is so big. It's so big, mm -hmm. yeah, because Bosch still has the pattern uh, for the Harbour Bosch okay, process. Yeah. Um, wait there, now let's have a little look at where we start from. Um, averting family, we don't need that one. Pathways. Pattern. <laughs> From lab from, to industry. From lab to industry. Here we go. Now, this is this is really good actually. Um, why don't it get bigger? Uh, the process was soon assigned to Badish Anilin and Soda Fabrik, better known today as it B A B A S F, which tasked chemical engineer Carl Bosch with scaling up the process. So they had that. So Haber produced the the lab. The process in Modern, the lab. The process mm. in the lab, but it had to be done for the in industrial yeah. level. Yeah, it was obvious that there were three main problems which had necessarily to be settled before the construction of a plant could be undertaken. These were supply of raw materials, i.e. the gas is not hydrogen and nitrogen, at a lower price than hitherto possible, the manufacture of effective and stable catalysts, and lastly, the construction of the apparatus. Yeah, so here we got a picture of one of the uh, reactors. Yeah, because without... Iron, without steel, iron, iron. Without going into it in too great a detail, because whenever you want to produce something in chemistry, you always got to have a reaction. And what they were needed is some things that help with a reaction is a catalyst. Catalyst, yeah. A lot of people out there would say that a catalyst doesn't take a part in a reaction, but, but we uh, would disagree. We would disagree. Um, they started with like osmium and other uh, yeah, rarish cheap, kind of, yeah, of course. rarish kind of metals, um, but they wanted something cheap. Absolutely, of course, yeah. So after two thousand experiments, yeah, two thousand. Oh, there 20, you go. So twenty thousand. No, Bosch's assistant, chemist Alwyn Mitash, some twenty thousand experiments to perfect a mixed catalyst based on iron oxide. oxide. Now, in our understanding, because this is all in the the the, um, the to produce. Ammonia and ammonia. Or a nitrogenous air. air. Yeah, because ammonia contains nitrogen. And now understanding is the iron oxide content that actually nitrogenizes the, the air. air. Absolutely, within the reactor. So, yeah. Absolutely. So there's no nitrogen in the air. They just use air as a feed feed gas, don't they? Yeah, basically. But yeah. there's no nitrogen in there at all. Yeah, so they get the air and they nitrogenize it by putting it through a process using an iron oxide catalyst. Yeah, absolutely, of course. At uh, high uh, pressure high and, uh, and high temperatures, yeah. Or h higher temperatures, yeah, of yeah. course. Um, the catalyst, uh, yeah, it was the it was the first of its kind and performed as well as osmium and uranium because that's what they tried. It was mm. too, They were too expensive. expensive. It was readily available and cheap. The catalyst is still in use today. And mm. Mitash is remembered as one of the great pioneers of catalytic chemistry. Yeah. Very good, but let's carry on. And um, Bosch believes his greatest feat was solving the third problem: how to build a reactor that would withstand both the high temperatures and the high pressures of the reaction. High pressure chemistry was still a, a very new field, uh, and suitable equipment was in short supply. The only existing high pressure process was Linz 
air liquefaction process, a low temperature process that used a soft soldered copper reactor, which was wholly unsuitable for high temperature applications. Mm. Anyway, come on. Bosch's first, I don't think we need to go through that lot, do we? Anyway, so we've got the, um, we've got the, we don't need to go on that at all, do we? No. Yeah. We don't need to go on that. So what we'll do is, because they mentioned, what they do is they mention the, um, the Frank Caro process, this one here. It's hard to, yeah, this one here, because it's they, they had to manufacture hydrogen, hmm. hydrogen and nitrogen together to produce ammonia. Oh, yeah. So we now know how they produce their nitrogenous air. Hmm. They ran just air over a bed of iron, iron, iron oxide, iron oxide, hmm. iron oxide catalyst at high temperatures, high pressure, pressure, to produce your nitrogenous air. What they wanted was it meant to make hydrogen. Hmm. Okay, and how they made hydrogen was quite straightforward, wasn't oh, it? Water gas. Water gas. That's what they used. Um, and here, figure seven shows a modern water gas producer, which is self-explanatory. The fuel charging is done after every third blast. So what they do is that they, they, um, they have coke or coal mm. as the fuel source, and basically they light it um, in air, I think, do they not? And then it gets to a certain temperature and burn where they cut off the air, don't they? And add water. And then they, they introduce add, water. They introduce steam. steam. Sorry, steam. They introduce steam. And because because the reduction of the flames, because it's part combustion, it's not fully combusting. The water, the steam the, decomposes the the remnants of the charcoal the, or the, the coke. coke. Yeah, the fuel source. And strips it of the remaining flammable material yeah sure and, and it produces water gas mm. and then when they get to a point where it needs stoking up again what they'll do is they'll stop the steam and they'll blast it with some air, uh, air and then it will just produce flames mm. so they're always so they're all they're always alternating, alternating between flames no flames flames no flames as soon as you get the flames you don't get your water gas do mm. you because yeah. you've burnt it Mm. Okay, so they're essentially stopping the fuel from burning, yeah, producing starting, a yeah. flame. Now some people could to actually... produce the gas. Yeah. Now some people could flammable argue, gas. Some people could argue that that flammable gas is carbon monoxide. Some people could argue it's yeah that gas is fla uh, carbon monoxide. And you and I have both argued that carbon monoxide is a form of is contains hydrogen. Absolutely, of course. But so uh, we've got in here, we've got um, in figure 12, this is the next stage of the process. You've got your water gas that's produced in this uh, construction here. And then the water gas goes into this section here. And what you've got here is the, um, in figure 12, which is the one here, uh, steam enters by the pipe A. So I don't the think you a should be... Going into this oh, okay. in too Pipe great to do. Well, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, what comes out of this is hydrogen and carbon monoxide. So you've got a cleaner product carbon. of carbon dioxide. Yeah, you've got yeah, you've got a cleaner product, less the water. Mm. You don't have the water. You've just got hydrogen and CO two. Okay, mm. because you've got the heater there. Okay, which yeah. basically burns burns off. But then what they do is then they clean the the outlet gas and strip it of its CO two. Yeah, they clean the outlet gas and strip it of its CO2 through this this way, which is the Lind Frank Caro process, okay. and we've got which was mentioned in this one here, mm. Lind, the Lind Frank Caro process. This is what they did in order to produce hydrogen. Mm. Okay, because they found a way to produce nitrogen. Now they wanted to find a way to produce hydrogen. So, the, in here, all you have is that you have your Water gas inlet coming in here from the left at the top. It goes down here into the cavity container B, which is, and it goes through a coil, okay, and that coil is surrounded by liquid um, carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide, I believe. Yeah, boiling at atmosphere pressure, minus yeah, 190 sure. degrees C. Oh, right, yeah. Under which pass through water, yeah, sure. Uh, blue water is compressed. Yeah, the 
the blue water gas is compressed to 20 atmospheres and under the pressure it is passed through water which removes practically the whole of the carbon dioxide and sulfuretted hydrogen. It is then passed through tubes containing caustic soda uh, which removes the remaining traces of carbon dioxide, sulfuretted hydrogen and water. Um, in figure 13, no, which is this one? All right, yeah, the purified water gas passes down the tube A down here through coils in the vessel B which is filled with liquid carbon monoxide boiling at atmospheric pressure so you were right now since the water gas is under pressure and is passing through coils called to it temperature of liquefaction but the bulk of it liquefies theoretically more gas should be liquefied in the tubes than is evaporated outside them the gas containing a considerable amount of liquid saturated with hydrogen passes into vessel C so your hydrogen your, your hydrogen comes in uh, C Mm. and then basically gets um, evaporates off and, yeah. and travels up to the top yeah. and is tapped off whereas your uh, the carbon monoxide part of the uh, water gas is kept within the system and then comes out at the top the carbon monoxide outlet yeah, so what you're heavy. doing because it's heavier so what you're doing is essentially you're stripping the carbon monoxide if I can use that word you know no, uh, from the hydrogen so the hydrogen is then used uh, mixed with the nitrogen over to, over a catalyst i would imagine at pressure and at heat yeah. to, to produce, produce your ammonia, ammonia. Mm, of course so that's how they do it now the thing is is that when we think about it i bet everyone understood that yeah uh, yeah sure but the the main thing is is that when we go back to the um when we go back to our uh aria jane's um comment about using carbon uh, carbon dioxide existing kind of naturally I mean there's no proof of that at all in this mm. in what we've just read that mm. not carbon dioxide is you know carbon dioxide is only produced through the Haber process or the Haber Bosch process simply because it's contained within the fuel the mm. natural gas coke or coal mm. because it's part burned yeah and it's not in the atmosphere this mm. is this is the essential this is why we're covering this information mm. i mean it's uh you know you know all those people who think that co2 sure is in exists the air. naturally in the mm. atmosphere sorry yeah. but you you know we think in our opinion we think that's totally bullshit yeah total and, bullshit and hopefully we get a comment from one of you globies, Mr. Flibble. Absolutely, yeah, Mr. Flipflop. Who, who talks about Mr. Keeling. Mr. Keeling, yeah, because absolutely, because what, what Mr. Keeling did was that he wasn't, there's no way Mr. Keeling was measuring carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Yeah, because the thing there's is. No way. There's no way, because there is no carbon, carbon dioxide dioxide. in the atmosphere unless right. you're standing near a factory that's burning coke or coal. Or a volcano, or or maybe a volcano, yeah. or um, you're 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 in a, then, near a brewery. You're standing next door yeah. to a brewery. But then some people would say that if a volcano is kicking out CO two, then there's CO two in the air naturally. Then. No, because the CO two will fall, because it's he it's heavy, so it will eventually it will fall to the ground. Well, um, not only that, but it also it'll just dis dis disappear. disappear disappear into the e into the ether oh forever gone mm. there we go but you know i mean it, it's, a, it's a big scam when we do think about uh, people who think that carbon dioxide is naturally occurring in the atmosphere you know these people are wrong mm. in our opinion yeah. there is no carbon dioxide existing naturally in the yeah, atmosphere true. yeah if you think we're wrong Join us in a Zoom meeting and show us the proof you've got to sh that demonstrates mm. CO2 is in the atmosphere. Yeah, that cool. actually demonstrates it. Or if you're even Elon Musk, you know, demonstrate to us that there is CO2 in the air naturally, that you want all these companies to try and find solutions in order to uh, get that CO2. Yeah, sure. Absolutely, of course. Capture yeah. it. Capture, you know. I mean, when you, yeah. I mean, when we, when we, when when I walk around the place, I don't think there's CO two in the air and oxygen and nitrogen. I just, it's just, I'm so just air. surrounded by air, air. and mm. 
particulates, bits of dust and, you know, yeah. that and this. But what's important is what man does to the air. That's the most important. Absolutely, I think we did there quite we well. Yeah. Come on, let's go. So, they, there you have it, you know. I mean, I mean, we're sold um, and quite satisfied that, you know, from the information we've looked at, you know, we can't understand how anyone can think there's carbon dioxide in the air. Yeah. So it's got, you know, in our view, it's a scam. It's a scam. Only there to change people's perceptions mm. and how they think about the natural world they live. Absolutely. Absolutely, of course. Because it's part of the dream. Mm. I mean, you get the carbon cycle coming in. Oh, right, yeah. With radioactive carbon-14, you know, and all this kind of rubbish, you know. All this stuff, they say... Must be, uh... they All this stuff that science says is true... But it can't be demonstrated to be true. It can't be proved to be true, true at all. It must be quite heart. It must be quite not heartbreaking, but it must be quite disheartening when you know that people are criticising your well, the things you do no. and the things you think are true. Yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah. it must be yeah. disheartening. But at the end of the day, you know, I don't make all this shit up. You know. Mm. Yeah. Anyway. So anyway, thanks ever so much. There you have it. And always remember till next time if something doesn't make sense, like like. Uh, a plant photosynthesizing, absorbing the CO2 that's yeah. in the air, turning the sugars or turning the sugars to starch. Oh, yes, turning sugar, yeah, turning and then releasing oxygen sugars. as yeah. a byproduct. Absolutely, of course, yes, of course. So we can breathe that in. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely, of course. Or and even thinking that we exhale carbon dioxide as mm. well. You know, um, yeah. yeah. Or even thinking that um, thinking a piece of paper won't turn. No, oh, thinking a piece of paper doesn't contain co2 absolutely of course hasn't or, absorbed co2 yeah or even thinking that uh, your nuclear reactor is just works on um nuclear fission nuclear fission alone when that's nobody it. actually th- has the brains to think well, well, where, how, where, where does the first neutron come, come from, from to start the whole process, process off? off absolutely of course yeah i mean yeah absolutely you know i mean it's uh it's terrible, yeah, I know, yeah, sure. Yeah, anyway. or, yeah I know, it's all rubbish, isn't it? It's absolute total bollocks. Absolutely. Anyway, thanks ever so much, and we'll see, see you next time. time. Okay. Bye. Ta-da. The Earth isn't round, it's flat. How do you know? I've observed it in all my travels over Europe. It's flat, everywhere it's flat.